you're new, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button before you leave today. So this video, I'm gonna give you guys a quick update on this whole residency application process. You know, if you have not seen the videos already, I suggest that you go check out my residency story, specifically part two, because I give you kind of the information on the, you know, a little bit, just kind of catch you up to date, so to speak. So in that video, I just talked about my decision to reapply to residency programs again, and I did. So now today is what, February 20th, I think. And I went through the application process, did everything I needed to do, and now I'm coming to tell you guys what's been going on so far. Well, with all the applications, I applied to six programs and I got one interview. So, of course, I went to that interview. And the interview was a couple of weeks ago. I feel like it went okay. You know, I mean, you never really feel like it went well, or at least I don't. I don't care what interview I have. The ones that turn out in my favor and the ones that don't, I just feel like I did horrible. So that's just me. But anyway, video. Um, the interview was a couple of weeks ago. It's behind me now. I've submitted my match, you know, my match ranking, even though I ain't got but one. And so now we just in the waiting process. But I wanted to come update you because since, you know, the last couple of weeks have gone by, it's just kind of been some, on my mind as far as how it worked out because it's crazy to me. So I applied to six programs and got one interview. Like, for real, this year was the worst outcome that I've had so far when it comes to interviews. Each year before, pretty much most of the programs that I applied to, I would get an interview at, give or take one or two, which is usual. That's kind of the standard. That's the norm. But then this year, I put in more work, I prayed on it, I got direction from God on it, I got more confirmation, and did extra things, getting my CV ready, went to mid-year, writing the, in letters of intent, all of this kind of stuff. I did way more this year than I ever have as far as the preparation process. And I got fewer results. So I was like, really, what's up with it? So first of all, one thing that I definitely noticed going to mid-year, which that was my first time attending, so I didn't have a comparison, but I did notice that with each program and each booth that I went through during the residency showcase, once they found out that I wasn't a current P4 or even a first-year graduate, it's like, dang, they don't have anything for you no more. So the truth about it is, whether you want to admit it or not, is that there is bias when it comes to pharmacists who are you know, who've been out practicing a while and now they're applying to pharmacy residency programs. So of course I got that question a million times. I was expecting it because clearly the years before I got the question. And the thing is, of course, for me, if you watched the other video, you know that it's been a process for me for years now and I have applied, it just has not worked out. But the frustrating thing about it is that when you approach these programs and you get a quick little five minutes at the most, uh, you know, kind of do your little pitch, I don't have time to sit here and have this whole backstory with you about the fact that I applied in past years and it didn't work out and all of this kind of stuff, you know, here and there when it kind of fit into the conversation I mentioned it, but soon as they see, you know, your CV or your business card or whatever, and it's okay, you've been out for a couple of years. Oh, pff, you pretty much tossed in the trash before they even review your stuff or even give you an opportunity to be interviewed. So that was frustrating. And like I said, there will be a lot of people that'll be like, Yes, you know, people, you know, work for a while and they come back and do residency, which they do. I know many pharmacists who have. However, there is a bias that comes with it that people don't like to talk about. And quite frankly, it's unfair because not every pharmacist that's been working for a while decided to go back to do a residency because they were tired of practicing where they were or, you know, whatever it is. Sometimes it just don't work out for you. And I don't think that's fair that I should be treated less than because I'm not a current fourth year student about to graduate. Like we got the same education and the same training and the experiences that I've had since I've been a pharmacist are things that you can only learn through the process, you know? And I'm like, so this should be a plus, but I don't see it that way. So bias is definitely an issue. If you come across this video and you are a pharmacist and you're considering applying to residency positions, just please know to be prepared for what comes with that, because it seems like the longer you out, the worse it gets. Each year afterwards, I got the question, of course, but this year, it seems like it was the worst. And I mean, this year, it'll be four years by May. So, I mean, I get it, but I know other pharmacists who worked five years, you know, or more, and they went back and did a residency. So, it's possible, but it is harder. Let's just be for real about it. Also, if I really want to be honest about it when it comes to the interviews, I really feel like all of this is really still one of those strategic moments that God is working out, however the outcome is going to be. 
like I said, in part two of the video, I talked to you guys about my decision that led to me applying and how I prayed on it immensely. I was fasting. I got confirmation in God's word to go forward with it. Even after that, when it came to going to mid-year, I still prayed on it numerous times before I went because I was really about to not go. And God gave me the go-ahead to go. Met a lot of people, networked, learned a lot of things. It was a great experience that I would do again regardless of the outcome this year. So it was definitely worth it. And then even after that, got back home, I did all of the work, put everything, you know, did everything I had to do. And I still was struggling with the doubt just because I think it was one of those things where that little bit of the reminder of the failures, the past years kind of almost paralyzes you because you're like, I don't want to go through this again and it's going to be the same outcome. You know, that negativity that you should not be speaking over yourself. I know these things, but you know, it's still creeping in. When you're tired, you know, let's be for real about it. So I prayed even after that. Even after the initial guy giving me that yes, each step of the process, I pray. Preparing for the interview, I'm like, God, help me, of course. But still, if this is not a part of your plan, let me know because I don't want to waste any time and energy. And he told me, go forward, give it your all. You have made it this far. I put this opportunity at your feet. Yes, it may be one, but you only need one. So you go and you give it all you got. So that's what I did. I gave it the best I had. So we'll see what happens on March 20th. When match day comes. But I just thought it was real ironic that out of all of these years and all of the work that I put in and more, more programs that I applied to this year than I did in the past, I got fewer interviews. And I'm like, for real though? Now, the good part of that, if you, you know, always try to look at the bright side of things, I did just have surgery a couple of weeks ago. Like right now, I'm pretty much at that four week mark post-op and the interview was two weeks ago. So when I went to the interview, I was two weeks post-op. I'm still having a lot of pain, still on crutches, which technically I still am, but anyway, I was heavily still on crutches to the point where I was not able to bear weight on the leg for real and do anything. So it was difficult traveling there and doing all that. The fortunate part about it is that the interview was only an hour away from home. I was able to drive there that morning. Well. Actually, my mom drove me there that morning and then we were back home by like three o'clock. So it was beautiful for one because it was not one of those all day drawn out kind of situations. But also I didn't have to travel far because some of the programs, they were far. So it was going to cost me hotel, flight, rental car. And let's be for real. It was going to be extremely hard to do when you on crutches and you still dealing with pain and issues from being having surgery. So the beautiful part about it is that I didn't have to endure all that. So we'll see. At the end of the day, I know that I've given it my all. I was obedient to God when I prayed and asked for direction. And each step of the way, he gave me the instructions of what to do and whether or not to apply and interview and all of that. And I did what he said. So I've done my part. And so now we just got to see what happens. Like I said, either it'll be a win or if it's not, it's still a win because then that still means God has better for me. Oh, and I really forgot to mention, even on top of the whole post-op difficulty with possibly having to travel, let's be for real about it. The corn ain't quite what it needs to be right now. Like, I mean, I'm good, but it's been better. So I wasn't really too excited about the idea of having to spend all of that money to, you know, get flights and hotel and rent a car and all of that to travel to some of the other locations for interviews. So I really still firmly believe that God has his, has his hand on me through this entire process and that those programs weren't for me and he didn't even let me waste my time having to go interview for him and go through all of the physical issues that came with it being post-op or the financial stress that it was going to cause. And that the interview that I did have, it was close enough where I was able to get there and back, no issues. And like I said, at the end of the day, if it's for me, it's for me. So on match day, I'll still match. You only need one. And when God's hand in it, ain't no telling what he going to do. So we'll see. So match day is March 20th. Of course, I will come let you guys know the result. I'm playing with the idea of actually recording my response, my reaction when I get the email, but I don't know. I might record it and then decide what I do depending on the result. I don't know. Anyway, I'll let you guys know what the result is on March 20th. In the meantime, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you know somebody that could benefit from the video, just me talking about my story and the process, make sure you share it with them because we all can use encouragement when we're struggling and dealing with stuff. I know I'm not the only pharmacist that has been trying for residency positions and dealing with this same thing. So I'm sure it can help somebody. And follow me on social media. You can find me at Pieces of Me Loves on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, maybe. I'm not sure about Twitter yet. But anyway, Facebook and Instagram for sure. And you can also find me at I am 
Dr. K underscore PharmD on Instagram. And that is where I do share a little bit more of my personal stuff. I share the YouTube things too, but you can connect with me on either platform. And until next time, I'll see you guys. Bye.